Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the session number two of uh, business and uh, technology. And uh, this is going to be business organization structure. I hope that you guys have already gone through the session number one, We're talking about business organization. It was a really short video around 23 minutes. It was uh, done. This is going to be a little bit lengthy than that. So let's get started with it. Before we get started, I would want to know your feedback that how are you finding, uh, how did you find the first session? Is there any feedback or is there any improvement required or is there any language change? If, if there's a language change, that's only Hindi, which is possible, which I can, you know, add on in my sessions, that's possible. So if you want to listen to me in that language, then put it down in the comment section below and I'll uh, look forward to it. All right. So now let's get started with uh, this session talking about organization structure. If you just see in here, organization structure is concerned with the way in which work is divided up and allocated. Now, when we talk about it, see, there will be different, different organizational structures in which things work. Like in an entrepreneurial structure, there would be one single owner and he would be taking control of the complete organization. Then going on, if suppose it's a functional or a kind of, you know, a bigger organization, the work will not be on the owner the most. It would be spread across management roles. It would be spread across other people. Decision powers would be taken by other managers of the organization. So how much is the work? Who has to do the work? How much is it divided? Who has to report to whom so that this organization can function? So there are different, different types of uh, structures. We are going to go through all those uh, structures in this. And it also outlines the roles and responsibilities of individuals and groups within the organization. Like suppose let's just take, uh, you know, an uh, organization like, uh, you know, let's just take a small ice cream brand, ice cream uh, you know, if suppose you start selling ice cream, what happens first? You do all the work. You Maybe you go make that ice cream. You choose the flavors which you want to sell. You try doing everything by yourself. So that's actually the entrepreneurial structure. You try selling everything, making it to the best of your own knowledge. You try to put in a lot of your inputs and see what the customer is willing to get started with. Now, when you are an entrepreneur or when you are into this particular structure, you are actually starting up your business. Now, when you're starting up your business, you are the person who can take your own decisions that what is to be done, what not to be done. You can take this really, really quickly. Like suppose, for example, let's just take this example of Facebook. Facebook, Facebook was not the first social media site, okay? Facebook was not the first social media site. Before Facebook, there were other, other more, uh, you know, social media applications like, for example, MySpace and stuff like that. There, what happened is there, they took up some investment. When the investment came in, the other organization, not Facebook, they took up some investment. They could not take decisions faster. Now, when they could not take decisions faster, they could not grow and Facebook outgrown them had outgrown them, you know, drastically. Why? Because Facebook was operated by Mark Zuckerberg based his, he and his friends at, uh, you know, their own uh, college hostel room. They were doing whatever was required then and they're looking at the customer's feedback. So in an entrepreneurial structure, you can be able to take quick decisions. You will be able to take, you know, a bit faster decisions, but there's also like, you know, you may take some, um, not so good decisions for the business because you're not having that experience of work or maybe you can just go on, ride on about that, how the customer is wanting it and give it to them. See that there are some advantages, some disadvantages in the entrepreneurial structure. It's there in every structure which we are going to talk about, but here that's what uh, it is. Then suppose you are growing your business. Suppose you find out, suppose you are selling ice creams and you find out that, you know, this is the flavor which is selling most. These are the types, these are the, you know, flavors if I put together, this is going to sell more. Or suppose same, the social media application, like this is the place where we are getting, this is the way in which we are getting more and more accounts created on Facebook. So they thought that, okay, let's get started with this. So in short, from an entrepreneurial structure, you crack down that what is actually working for you and you want to grow further in it. So what you do, you get in towards the 
functional or departmental structure where you have separate separate managers for each heads like example you'll have a separate manager for marketing you'll have a separate manager for sales you'll have a separate manager for production you'll have a separate manager for your sales so sales is there say it again so yeah you can have it for your procurement you can have it for your production so on and on you can get different different managers working for different different heads like you can get started with this working you are an entrepreneur under you there is a marketing head there is a you know sales team there is a production team there's a purchasing team there's an hr team and so on and so forth so each one is defined by their functions which they do their functionality which they do now suppose i have started a business small business i'm only the owner and uh, i'm taking care of that entrepreneur entrepreneurial structure next i find out that what's working for my business so what do i do i hire people i make teams of them and then tell them that this is the work this is the role which you need to do and uh, that that ends up in a functional structure so you found out what is working for you i'm just telling you in a more practical manner you get into a functional structure when you find out what's working for you until then you'll be into an entrepreneurial structure you'll be day day in day out firefighting for your business making sure that what's running what's not you're trying to figure out what's your see getting started with business is like you know you're still experimenting on what's going to work for your business for some people it may take few days for some it may take few years to understand what's working for their business and where to concentrate just an example to give you mcdonalds were trying to get to the best you know what is working for them it took them years to understand what's going to work for them so they came towards that french fries coke and the hamburger these were the three things which were giving them around 80% of their sales from the menu so what did they do they scrapped out the complete rest of the menu concentrated on three and with that three they were so successful that they went on towards creating branches and you know franchises and franchises that's a different model that's a different story itself we'll talk about it but when you figure it out that what's working for you even if suppose you're starting a business suppose you you yourself watching this uh, session right now you think of starting a business that this is going to work at the start you may think that that's going to work but once you get started then you know how actually things work and then you understand that what twist and works you need to do in your business and you get going with it with that understanding what's working you move on towards a functional structure where you have separate separate heads who would be actually working in that business so once you crack down that okay everything is going on in these functions what you can do you can have different different branches different different places and have the same structure over there for example if you just see this uh, there is a parliament uh, you know people sitting in there just understand this suppose you have cracked down the functional structure okay the same it is there like in the indian structure each state has a chief minister so each uh, you know branch will have a particular uh you know president or a particular cm you can say a chief manager would be there then under that chief manager same there will be you know like sales department purchase department everyone would be having something like uh, everyone would be having people functions under them like suppose in a uh, government a chief minister will have their own you know like this is the revenue minister this is the education minister this is the um, you know some other minister which is going to work under them so in that structure what is happening you can say it is a geographical structure or a divisional structure but what's happening from first entrepreneurial structure one person taking care of all next moving on you have few managers for it next what happens you have different different branches in that different different branches again you have that same functions running in in that so that becomes a divisional structure now once you go in towards uh, this what happens is it's it's kind of it's kind of clumsy now so it becomes a matrix structure where one department another head another head one department there would be another major manager of a department would want a subordinate of another department he would want to communicate with them you try communicating with each other reporting in the stuff the responsibilities is like 
you report it towards project lead, you report it towards the vice president of marketing, you report it towards someone else also. Kind of a metric structure. We say that it's it, it's kind of, kind of complicated, but that's actually running uh, in the business because there are people whom you have to report to him, you have to report to them also. So it goes on. So kind of uh, that structure. Now, moving forward, once you're there in here, you move in towards a structure where there is no boundary, where there's no boundary, there's no limitation of a particular location. And that is called a boundaryless structure. Now, under a boundaryless structure, you are, you know, spread across. Your business can be spread across. It's not limited to a particular place. I've put down a few examples. Now, starting up with hollow. A hollow type of an organ. There are three types of boundaryless structures. Number one is hollow. Number two is virtual. Number three is modular. Now, what are there? Some examples I've keep, kept it here. Like, suppose I've kept the first example for hollow is uh, nika.com. Why? See, what does hollow means is that they keep their all important vital roles and responsibilities of their business in their hand. And the other not so important stuff, they give it outside, they outsource it, they give the responsibility to someone else. Like, for example, if you just see in here, Nika, what, what's their main uh, USP is that they make sure that they get the best quality at a cheaper price. That's what they do. They started up with their, uh, you know, I guess with the women uh, store, women uh, accessories and stuff. They made sure that they get got their products at a uh, wholesale price from the best quality, you know, products makeup. And then they sold it to their customer. So their main, main work was what? Procurement and selling it to the customer directly uh, through their online stores, procurement and sales. So they made sure that the quality was really, really good because for their counterparts like Amazon or something like that, anybody can just come up over there and uh, sell their products. But at Nika, it was them themselves only getting the best quality of the product and then selling it towards the customers. Now with that, what happened is, what about the other work like managing the HR, keeping the accounting, doing something, uh, you know, did it was kind of marketing. What did they do? They outsourced it towards experts. So what what's happening in a hollow organization? All the important work, keep it by yourself. Not so important, but still required. Outsource it towards experts because maybe that's not your expertise. So that's what, uh, you know, a hollow organization is. Main work done by yourself. Not so important work done by someone else so that you can concentrate on what's your, you know, main, uh, your main strength. You can concentrate on your main strength. All right. Next, let's go on towards the next type of a boundaryless structure, which is a virtual one. And the best example for virtual uh, boundaryless organization is Uber. In fact, based on the Uber model, there are so many other models which have been created in the market. Now, in this age of uh, social media, you guys know what Uber is. You guys know how Uber works. You guys know how, uh, you know, based on Uber, there are so many applications which have been made like that. Clone applications or inspirational applications based on Uber. So what does Uber mean? Uber is just here a name. Uber does not give salary to their drivers. They do not own those vehicles which are there, uh, you know, doing that taxi service. What they are there, they are merely a application. And based on that application, they are an aggregator which brings in the, you know, drivers at a place. He brings in the car owners at a place. And then those people who demand for that particular uh, service, taxi service from one place to another, getting a vehicle at your doorstep, bringing all of them together, making a sale happen and uh, going doing going on doing their business so that's what uber did or you can say swiggy zomato or some food delivery apps across the globe who are doing it's kind of the same they don't have their own physical location but they have their virtual presence and with that virtual presence work things are working for them so that's how things work in that i hope you guys know what's a virtual organization and that comes under a boundaryless structure. Then next, going on towards a modular organization, the best example is this uh, Apple. 
apple is uh, you know what do you say it gets made in california gets assembled in china and then it goes back again to california and then it gets sold across the globe so what's happening in here you have subdivided or suppose you have divided the process of making this particular mobile phone the process of making this particular mobile phone with different 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 components and then putting it together and then selling it so this complete process apple i've taken in as an example you can take in another type of organized uh, products which have created in different different places different different places different different components are made and then assembled together then move forward that's what it is with you know a modular type of a boundaryless structure of an organization now let's move forward towards minsberg's organizational configurations now you need to put in a little bit more stress on this now what does minsberg do minsberg what does he say is that there's a top management there's a middle management there's a working base which you can also call it operating core and then there's a techno structure and then there's a support staff so five things in here and there's also a sixth thing which is called ideology ideology of a organizational structure now what does minsberg say here what does minsberg say here is that each organization each organization either of these five or you can say six adding on ideology in here either of these six okay one would be dominating the complete type of the organization like suppose in an organization suppose the owner or the entrepreneur he is taking all decisions of the business and there is high dependency on him then that means that this is a simple structure because that's pretty normal okay they say that if suppose the top management is highly focusing on that complete organization and complete organization is dependent on him then that's a simple structure then he says that like suppose a techno structure organization what can a techno structure of an organization said a machine bureaucratic organization what does this mean it means that you have high dependency on a machine or a technology now what does that mean for example amazon flipkart on what basis do they run they run on the basis of the strong technology which they have that technology they are highly dependent on like the tracking system of amazon they they are dependent uh, on that they are dependent on that complete uh, online e-commerce page yes or no so that organization you can say it's a techno structure it's a machine bureaucratic organization in the same manner if you just say that if a middle management is taking control over the organization you can say that it is a divisionalized structure organization and if suppose you say that the working base the working base is taking control of the organization then that's a professional bureaucracy organization now this is something which i am explaining you over by seeing this i would want you guys to relate to it i would further recommend i would further recommend especially for this particular minsberg organization of configuration is to open up your material either it is the kaplan or the bpp text open that up try exploring it more try putting your notes onto it try putting your notes onto it make your notes out of it so that you learn a lot from this and see this this complete business and technology you guys need to relate it towards your own examples you need to relate it towards your own stories which is going around suppose you have a business uh, at a home which is going on someone is running it try looking into it that how things work try relating it with the business organizational means this uh, business and technology you will be able to relate towards it and you will be able to learn with it and understand it the main question which you guys would be having sir what type of questions are we going to get you are going to get questions around the stuff which we are talking about right now you are going to get questions somewhere from you know what what's a techno structure what if an organization is focusing mainly on their technology what type of organization is it it's a machine bureaucratic organization looking towards the options for that i hope you guys are there with me moving forward then we talk about separation of direction and management or you can say separation of ownership and control 
Now, ownership and control, why is it different and why it should be different is because if suppose, I, I, would, I would just say that, you know, let, let's just take a, a more, more, more practical example. Suppose I'm starting a business or I'm personally starting a business. I would want that business to do really, really good. Or, you know, I would be highly, highly cautious about this business which is going on. I would treat this business like my own baby. And uh, everyone does that also. Now, when you do that, you are highly, highly cautious. Okay, what if someone does not like my product? What if someone does not like the way what I'm giving my service? If, if something like this is there, this thought will stop me from doing my work. The same like, you know, you, you have an attachment with that particular business. With that attachment, what happens is you will not be having, you know, that much of, uh, you know, independency in doing what's best for the business. In fact, when it's your own business, you would become a bit more moody on doing work because there's no one about you to say you what to do right. Okay. So when you are your own boss, the challenge is like there's no one controlling you or there's no one telling you what is to be done at what time. And you would be like, you'd be doing based on what you require. Okay, so it does not work in that. You should work in a disciplinary manner. Okay, you should work in a disciplinary manner. And that, that that's a bit possible when you have a separate management. Okay, you have separate ownership and separate control organization can work in properly. And you should have expert people who have business acumen, who have knowledge on how, who have the skill set on how business should work, then only things move forward with it. And that's also the reason you should have a separation of direction and management and separation of management and control. Okay. Now, talking about a tall and a flat organization, a tall organization is like, you know, one person will be having two subordinates, then that subordinate will be having two subordinates, then two subordinates, then it, it goes on, on and on and on and on, you know, like, you know, like a network marketing pyramid, it would become, you know, one person under him two, then under him two, under him two, that kind of a tall organization where you need, where connecting with the higher authorities will be challenging in that organization. You can just connect with your immediate supervisor you cannot just go connect directly with the owner type of uh, stuff whereas in a flat organization there would be the owner and then all the subordinates working under them you can directly reach out towards the main owner of the business or get in touch with them uh, directly that's what is you know flat organization whereas in a tall organization one person under him two then under him two then under him two it goes on and so forth that that's what is a tall and flat organization they have their own pros and cons. They have their own advantages. They have their own disadvantages with it. Like you can get in touch with the owner fast. Advantage. You cannot get with the owner soon touch. Disadvantage. Sometimes it will be like, it's good that there's a proper formal chain of communication. Sometimes it would be really pathetic that, you know, to get small, small things done, it needs to go through a lot of chain of commands to be passed on and then you go make things forward. Kind of a bit difficult, like a tall organization, you can see the Indian government structure to get things approved. It takes a lot of time, a lot of approvals. Flat organizations, organizations which can take decisions quickly, small organizations, flat organizations most of the times, or maybe those organizations who lack a structure, that's a flat organization now coming up towards offshoring now offshoring or uh, you can say that it, it's slightly different than outsourcing outsourcing is like you giving your work to an expert that expert can be anywhere okay in your country in another country you can just give that to someone and that is outsourcing but in offshoring what happens is you take business or you take a particular department of business to another country other than this uh, country, you just take it forward to another country. Like, um, you know, <clears throat> you are, well, suppose you're working in the US and you want an expert working in India. 
So what you've done is nothing but a, that a whole particular department you have offshored it to India, and that's also the reason you see many many uh, businesses in here in Hyderabad, in Bangalore, many IT organizations, US based companies. They have their offshored uh, places in here. They have their site offices, like their offices in here. They have it. There, there are many examples for it. You guys, if you know some examples, you can put it down in the comment section below or in the live chat at the side. Then coming up with a shared services approach. Now, shared services approach is like, you know, you have, uh, if, if, if you look into here, there are many businesses which try or which, uh, if suppose you want to set up a manufacturing plant, you're not going to set up that manufacturing plant at your home or just nearby your home you would want to set up that manufacturing plant where there are other manufacturing plants also and why is that so is because when there are other manufacturing plants there there only would be the places where you can get all the facilities required for a manufacturing plant like you can get those inbound outbound uh, transportations like those vehicles would be there standby because well, those goods vehicles would be there nearby to a manufacturing plant only so that they can transport this uh, goods from here to there. You can find that easily. You cannot find a heavy truck just nearby your home. You'll not find it, but you'll find it at a... <coughs> but you'll find it one second. So you will be getting that particular services at a place where there's a common businesses going on in there. The same goes with maximum businesses. They try to like restaurants. They try to keep, make sure that, you know, maximum restaurants try to be, you know, nearby, nearby to each other. Or if suppose you're starting up a business, like, uh, you know, a restaurant business, you try to make sure that you are at the right, you know, a place where the other restaurants are there. In fact, uh, this particular structure, this particular model of, cloud kitchens cloud kitchen model is there you know which is booming up right now so what's happening there's a real estate organization which has taken up a particular uh, you know a facility facility and they have subdivided it into portions and once they have subdivided into portions they are letting it out towards kitchens so those kitchens those restaurants they come make up the you know place their own uh, you know you know get their own menus their own uh, you know raw materials ingredients they have their own marketing platforms and this particular real estate facility what do they do they take care of their orderings like um, you know how to place their orders in a proper manner they have informational technology like you know those softwares uh, name it like uh, otter or something like that those particular software those unified softwares integrating it with other delivering uh, platforms like swiggy zomato and getting that work done so with that they have different different brands also in which they are working under so it, it's like a different ball game itself and i know it firsthand because i've done that uh, work also so if you guys are really interested we are going to be talking a lot about my real life experiences which i've dealt in there uh you know even i've worked in a transportation organization in dubai so i know that you know getting that transportation done like you know getting your good travel towards any gcc country by road is a bit challenging but it's done on a regular basis so these all things you know these all things happen where you know common areas common places are there which uh, you know common places at which you would want to start a business so that that business goes on it's a business place you won't start a business at your home itself until unless it's a work from home work all right so let's move forward towards uh, you know centralization and uh, decentralization of an organizational uh, structure centralization is like you know an example where if i have to take a decision like if suppose i am an, an employee of an organization and uh, you know suppose it's a restaurant and someone walks up to me and says that um, can i get a discount can can you give me 20 percent 30 percent discount so my answer would be should i give it or not or i'll just say wait i just need to go ask my boss and come back to you and say you that whether it's possible or suppose i'm selling uh, you know a tumbler and someone comes up and says that can you give me a discount for this 
I'll say that I can give you a discount. Let me go talk to my manager and come back. To you. Kind of a centralized decision making is not there on that on that particular employee. Suppose that decision making is there, like you would be having the authority. Suppose you have already given, like the manager has already given you that. If someone is asking you a discount, then you can give a discount up to thirty percent flat. You can go up to thirty percent. Uh, less than that you can give a discount it's in your hand now when this power is already given then that means that's a decentralized thing so someone comes up and walks up to me and asks that can you give me a discount of 20 percent on this if he asks me he get that otherwise he don't he does not even get that he just takes it off so you have the negotiation power in your hand to make that uh, deal done so if you look out that if that customer is willing to buy then uh, you can say that yeah I can give you a 20% discount. You did not go back, talk to the manager and come back because you already have the power that's already been given to you. It has been decentralized. So when you have that power, you go take that decision. Yes, you can take, you can, I can give you a 20% discount and I can give you a good service as promised. So that's the authority which you have. And most of the times this is what it lacks. And that's what takes, you know, decision making a bit longer. If power is actually decentralized and with the right people, then things can go a bit faster. And suppose, uh, you know, if it is decentralized, there are chances that power can go out of hand. It can be going haywire without any control. That's also possible. So there are pros and cons all the time for either of the decision to be taken, either of the organization structure. Now, moving forward, different levels of planning. There is strategic level planning, tactical level planning, and operational planning. A strategic level planning, it will take you like, you know, you make a plan for five to 10 years for an organization. Five to 10 years, what is our particular plan? What do we need to achieve? What do we have to do? That's a strategic level planning. Who does that? Those strategic level people sitting at the top of the organization, they'll do it. Whereas a tactical level plan, what are we going to do this year? Who would be doing this planning? That middle level management. What is the work? What are the you know targets for this particular year? It would be in the hands of those middle level managers. Then coming up towards uh, the operational level, those are the people who would be making plans for day to day. Like, what's our daily target? What's going to be our target for this day? What should we do for uh, in this? What are the work to be done in this? What are the objectives to be achieved by today's date? Who's doing this? It's the operational level people who would make sure that they do their planning for on a daily basis and make sure that it's completed and make sure the best plans are those operational level plans like you plan that okay i'm going to do a sale of one lakh rupee today i'll make sure that i push towards achieving it you you can do that you can do that okay so it depends on different businesses to businesses all right so let's go a bit forward then coming up towards the roles and functions of the main departments in a business organization now coming up starting it to first with uh, research and development what does research and development do they look in towards what are the what are the improvements required in the existing products what are the improvements required what would be best for the business what for what would be the best product if suppose if it is like that, would, would that be good for me? That's that's a probable improvement. And then developing new products for the business, that's highly possible. Like, for example, let's just take this this, this type of uh, tumbler. After all, it's going to serve the same purpose of a water bottle. Now, a water bottle, a water bottle which can keep the uh, water warm or cold, whichever you want that's an additional function that you need to research and develop i mean that what type of uh, you know material to be used so that uh, this improvement can be given towards the customer you need to look into going towards purchasing acquiring the goods and services necessary for the business how and when can i get the best goods and services best for the business available so that things move forward overall overall it is just like you know this business and technology paper will be focusing on how are you how are you able to contribute towards the growth of the business how are you able to look into what's lacking in the business and uh, suggest on what should be improving towards the business that's what you need to do 
as a consultant or as a person in a business do whatever you are doing in this organization but you should always be thinking that okay how can i you know put in my inputs to improve this organization that's what you should be thinking about all the time then going up towards production converting raw materials into finished goods direct service provision is providing services to the clients like example accountancy firm their roles and responsibilities set as then marketing administration and bookkeeping now as we talk about marketing let's get into a bit of marketing now what does marketing do is they identify the needs which is called a market research a market research on how things are required what is the customer demanding what what is the customer wanting so that we can place that same product in front of them and get that done so then supplying customer needs giving that giving what the customer is demanding so that you can get the best price for it and then having the best efficiency in distribution in distribution of the things which are demanded in fact if you know this uh, demand and supply suppose some things which are in demand and the supply is less automatically the price will shoot up the supply is less the demand is more price is going to shoot up and that's what is happening and some people call it inflation some people give it reasons of something or something else like um, the petrol prices are rising right now what, what's the case in there petrol prices are going down what's the reason there are so many external factors through which the petrol uh, gas prices are influenced so have a market research about it and try putting a product in front of a customer which can be bought or sold which can be bought and you can sell it okay then profitability pricing decisions promotion which we are going to talk about in here which is the marketing mix now when you are into a marketing mix deciding about a marketing mix this is uh, see understand this is an organizational structure type of uh, chapter you talk about marketing mix is like which product do we have which place are we going to sell this product and what would be the promotion like you know what 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 kind of uh, offer can we give him for that and at what price we must sell this these are the four p's of a marketing mix which you need to look into that okay what is our product suppose i am selling something related towards airpods or something like this particular mic if i am selling this mic where am i selling this mic am i selling it on amazon if i am selling it on amazon there are many more mics which are available at a less price how am i going to be visible there what promotion can i offer there and what price should i sell it there because at amazon there are really really cheap mics also available so if a person is just looking for the cheapest mic then you are not going to be sellable there so what is the customer looking out for kind of researches you should do for each and every product right nowadays you guys need to go out and look out for these stuff think about uh, you know if if you look around uh, your what is there in your hand suppose you're wearing a watch or something like that that how did how did you actually buy this what was the cycle it which went through like uh, right now if you just seen here this psychology of marketing is really really strong right now like suppose if you just seen here uh with the with the court case of uh, johnny depp and amber going on right now it's like you know everywhere you just open up your social media there are people talking about that or there are some actual footage from the court case which is happening right now who's johnny depp that uh, person from uh, pirates of caribbean so let's go watch so what's happening there is that things are going around about that so what's happening like you know people would want to go back watch it again so there there is a mindset which is getting created behind the mind you talk about something and that pops up in front of you on your mobile phone that's because they are hearing you that's because they are hearing you about what you are thinking of what uh, what you are you know looking out for suppose you look out for uh, i need to buy furniture for my place then you are going to get advertisements for furniture and that's all analytics which is working behind it uh, that's going to come up in chapter number 4 of uh, business and technology so wait for it we are going to discuss about that a lot then moving forward towards product issues like you know 
defining what your product is, what you are going to deliver, what value you're going to deliver from this product and where you position that product matters a lot so that the customer is willing to buy it. You, you cannot just say that my product is the best and nobody is buying it. That's not right, my friend. Maybe your product is the best, but who knows it? You know it, your team knows it, your relatives knows it, really good, but does the world know it? That's what is the real question. And if the world does not know it, then you are the person who needs to communicate, go out there and say about it. All right. Moving forward with the pricing issues. Now, pricing issues at what cost it took you to make that particular product? What are the customers expecting from you? And what price is the competition selling at? And what is your objectives, long-term objectives, which you need to achieve? What are the investor expecting out of you? These all other things which you need to consider while pricing this particular product. Like... Uh, this particular mic, it took me $10 to make, suppose, okay? It took me $10 to make. At what price is it sold in the market? What are the competitors selling it at? Competitor is selling it at $30. What are the customers expecting? Customers are expecting somewhere around 20, 25. So can I sell it at 20 or 25? Okay. What is your objective? What is your target which you have to achieve? If you have this particular margin, can you achieve your target? Mm, is that yes or a no? Think about it and then take a decision. You are going to get these type of real life situations in front of you. If not today, in the near future, you will have situations like these and you need to look into that. What should be your pricing be done for that? I hope you guys are getting it. Let's move forward towards promotional issues. Now, promotional issue is called the IDA rule. Now, what's this IDA rule? IDA rule is the awareness, interest, desire, and action. Now, awareness, interest, desire, and action. If suppose you're watching IPL, while watching IPL, what happens? They create an awareness that you can order anything on Swiggy. Like you can order uh, groceries on Swiggy. Then when you can order groceries on Swiggy, that's an awareness. Then what happens is you build on some interest. Okay, I need this at home. So let me just order it from Swiggy. They are giving me an offer also. So once you do that, then the, the desire comes in, you make an order and that comes up towards you. Either it is uh, groceries or sometimes you know, some made food or itself you want to order. There's a desire which is getting created and it comes on in front of you again and again, again and again, again and again, again and again. And then you just go ahead and order it. So that's a you know process which they go through. Awareness, interest, desire to get that, convert it to action. Awareness, interest, desire, action. That's a marketing rule, IDA rule, or you can say that, AIDA. Awareness, interest, desire, action. You guys should know this. When you market about something, you market about that, how to do it, okay? Uh, like cred, they are giving some really good advertisements. So it's a really good awareness that, what exactly credit is doing first you just watch an advertisement that you know some personalities are doing something which is opposite okay so that sounds interesting what what do they do what is cred actually okay cred gives you rewards if you pay your credit card bills through it see i also know it why because it's coming again and again in front of us if you're watching a match okay now that's going to be done let me pay my credit card bill with that you do that. And that's the action which you've done. So that's a promotional way which you get into a customer's head. I hope you guys are there with me. There's a lot about it when we are going to do, uh, you know, this chapter six, seven, eight. We are going to talk about this a lot. Even in chapter number four, where we are going to talk about big data analytics and stuff, we are going to talk about uh, this again. So make sure that you follow up with us. If you have not yet subscribed, subscribe to this channel. If you have not yet shared this particular sessions with your friends, go ahead, share it with them. Suppose they are thinking about joining ACCA or thinking about just understanding what is the knowledge in ACCA. Just get started with this. Uh, there's no restrictions in here. You can follow it up. You can gain knowledge. 
if you think of doing the qualification you do it if not at least you get the knowledge okay then place distribution issues either you sell it directly to them or you sell it indirectly through those stores selling it directly is called uh, direct selling and it comes under the network marketing where the people who are buying it those people are only like you know promoting it further and they get a commission out of it that is direct selling whereas indirect selling is like the selling it through a distribution channel like you go towards the main those uh, dmart stores those ratnadeep stores you place your product there people come and buy it from there that's one or you just directly sell it from your own website also or have a direct selling platform through which uh, it can be sold either one works best it depends on how the customer is willing to buy that's how you need to take it and you have you are having data available for it which you can use it to make a decision for this now when i say data available to making decision it comes towards the strategic making strategic marketing process so what's your strategic choice on how do you see to improve your products how do you see to you know get in towards you know uh, with a blast towards the customers like you know try reaching out maximum number of customers that's a choice which you need to make and then how do you implement these stuff it's not that easy like you know talking about marketing 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 you open up a, another youtube video there will be many people giving lot of gyan about how to market there's a lot and lot of stuff talking about how do you market yourself on social media how do you market yourself on this particular platform how can you be the best seller on amazon how can you be having a import export business so lot of strategies are there lot of gurus are there outside you can learn from them a lot and after that it comes up that how do you actually do it how do you actually do it is get started with one step at a time it's not a big strategy at a time you just apply it and it gets applied you start with one step at a time one step at a time one strategy at a time implement it make sure that it works and then move on towards the next 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 step so understand this whenever you make a strategy you should also have a implementation step by step process so that you do it i hope you guys have uh, got it till here and you guys have followed it with me we have come towards the end of this chapter chapter number 2 is done i would recommend you guys suggest you guys order you guys go ahead and try solving some test your understanding questions of chapter 1 and chapter 2 from the kaplan or bpp material which is there available whichever is there available with you go ahead try solving it if you guys get some uh, you know queries or doubts put it down in the comment section below i'll be really happy to solve them all right thank you very much uh, for watching and being here with me hopefully you guys get what you uh, you know desire the or if i say it in a more proper manner i hope that you guys get what you actually want and what has been the reason for you watching this session till here like you are in an expectation that you will complete a qualification or get this knowledge i hope you guys get that practice a lot it's not just listening this session go the, there and implement it try practicing it by yourself all right see you guys in the next session